Welcome traders to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 2nd of August with me Patrick Munley. After a week where the Fed made another step towards tapering and Chinese government's regulatory clampdown generated a risk-off wave that spread across Asian and global markets, one would have thought we would have seen a stronger dollar across the board, but in fact the dollar posted one of its worst weeks of 2021 as it lost ground against all G10 currencies. Indeed, US real yields touch record lows, but real rent differentials have not proved to be a determining factor for FX moves since markets have turned more sceptical about the global recovery story. The main trigger for the dollar correction was Powell's post-FOMC press conference where he still sounded cautious about the recovery, but I doubt such comments, which were a mere reiteration of his recent rhetoric, rhetoric were enough to dent expectations that the Fed will soon, and potentially at the Jackson Hole uh, Symposium late August, announce the timeline for an asset purchase reduction, or enough to force a price out of rising expectations around a 2022 rate hike. Instead, the dollar correction appeared to be mostly a profit-taking event, really, with markets that had already priced in the extra bit of hawkishness at the July FOMC and cashed in on some of the long dollar positions. In the week ahead, some key data for July will tell us what pace the US economy has continued to recover. But it's worth keeping an eye on debt ceiling discussions in Congress and the potential impact on the US money markets. Economists expect the ISM surveys to keep reporting strong demand, but once again, highlight the constraint on the supply side. The other main release, obviously, is the July jobs report, which should see employment gains at around 900,000, according to estimates, which is largely in line with the broad consensus and should underpin the notion that the labour market is on a solid recovery path. On balance, next week's data flow should allow markets to cement their Fed's tapering expectations when combined with global recovery sentiment that remains mixed and the material risk of more equity shocks coming from China, uh, which are likely to have already exacerbated portfolio outflows from emerging markets. I think it's too early to call for an end to uh, the dollar's recent good momentum. And I think we could think about uh, a pickup into this week. Uh, from a technical perspective, we've got a nice uh, reversal on Friday from, uh, from the S3 there and this projected internal ascending trend line support. If we can hold this uh, 91.70 as support, I still see the potential for this final leg up into the quality objective at 93.73. At this juncture, um, to suggest or call an end to this current corrective phase, we have to be taking out the, uh, the 91 uh, pitchfork support there, and that would open up a move to test uh, the 89.40 lows again. But for now, uh, if we can get some follow through on Friday's reversal, still looking for this 93.73 uh, test and potentially the yearly pivot there at 94.11. Uh, moving on now to the euro. Uh, the cautious Fed offered some helping hand, obviously, to the euro, and the subsequent dollar softness facilitated a pop in the euro. Uh, however, Upside looks limited. Uh, the cautious July FOMC meeting is now in the price, and although the Fed doesn't appear uh, to aim to disrupt markets, it will nonetheless be ahead of the ECB in terms of uh, monetary policy normalization. In contrast, the conclusion of the ECB strategy review does point towards a very cautious ECB that should keep the policy ultra accommodative uh, for a prolonged period of time. From this perspective, higher than expected Eurozone second quarter GDP and June Eurozone CPI uh, didn't really affect the Euro much on Friday, given that the dovish ECB bias is very clear. Uh, domestically, it's a very quiet week in Eurozone data front. Really, the only piece of data of note will be uh, June retail sales uh, given on Wednesday. I uh, don't think that'll have much impact on the Euro. So from a technical perspective, we traded up into the, uh, the, one, the 119 resistance zone a bit of uh, profit taking late Friday. If we can hold uh, 118.30 as support, there's the potential for a broader correction to test uh, descending trend line resistance, pitchfork resistance up towards 120. However, if uh, if the pullback doesn't find support uh, at the 118.20, 118.30, we still have a downside objective, a quality objective versus the larger swing structure here. At, uh, at 116.30. So it's going to be pivotal that uh, the euro 
attempts to base above 118 if we're going to see another leg to the upside. Otherwise, we can anticipate uh, a break of the prior lows and the 117 on route to that 116.30. In Japan, let's pull up the Japanese yen, take a look at what we're doing here. Uh, Dollar yen has attempted to enter a more uh, sustained downtrend and to consolidate below the 110 level around which the pair has been hovering really since early July. Record low real rates in the US and the waves of risk off generated by Beijing's regulatory clampdowns are indeed offering a broadly supportive environment for the yen. Although the large majority of the moves in the pair are driven by the dollar dynamics, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics are heading into their final week and despite the near total absence of crowds at the events, uh, there have not been any virus related interruptions so far. What is, however, an element of concern and may impact Japan's growth outlook is the flare-up in COVID cases in Tokyo. Let's see if this will start to have an impact on the yen, which anyway may struggle to hold on to recent gains in the week ahead if, as expected, the dollar stabilizes and solid US uh, jobs data may fuel the recovery story. So from a t technical perspective, as we hold 110.70 as resistance, I'm still looking for a move down to test the approach objective at 108.58. Really at this stage we'd have to get a close above that 110.70 to uh, refocus on the upside objectives of 112 and then on to potentially 114. But for now, uh, whilst we hold below 110.70, let's uh, see how we trade at 108.58. Uh, next we'll take a look at sterling. Cable dollar here. All the focus uh, next week will be on the August BOE meeting on Thursday. I don't expect any new guidance on the interest rate path and look really for a repeat of the prior language that significant progress is needed before stimulus is removed. A couple of members are likely to vote for an early end of QE as this should not come uh, as a surprise to markets and the guidance should be seen as neutral. The impact is probably going to be limited. Uh, with euro dollar stabilizing and the dollar experiencing some tentative progress, sterling is likely to uh, to trade with a bit of weight at the beginning of the week here. So from a technical perspective, as we hold that uh, 140 descending uh, pitchfork resistance there, look for a move back to test uh, 137.50 as potential support. Buyers do step in there, then we can uh, really start to focus uh, on the upside. But if uh, if we fail to find support at the, uh, the 137.50, then we can uh, certainly get another test of uh, 135.80 on route to an ideal 134.95 before attempting to put in another leg to the upside. So really going to be key to see how we open up the week here. If we get some follow through to the downside, uh, watch how we trade at 137.40, 137.50s. And last but not least, down under in Australia, uh, concerns about Beijing's regulatory clampdown. Uh, well, if, if that wasn't enough to unnerve the overexposed Australian market, a plunge in iron ore prices uh, put strong curbs on the Aussies' ability to cash in on the dollar weakness last week. Iron ore futures reverted to May's lows after China stepped up with more measures to curb steel production, which have included the imposition of tariffs on steel exports. Domestically, the focus will be on the Reserve Bank of Australia August meeting, which is held on Tuesday. Look for policymakers in Sydney, a city that is about to spend the whole month of August in lockdown, will not make any amendment to the current policy stance after the adjustments announced in early July. The jump in inflation to 3.8% in the second quarter should be dismissed as trans transitory, and the bank will likely wait for more indications from the labour market before reacting on the policy side. The recent spread of the Delta variant, which is triggering fresh restrictions in Australia, is likely another reason why the RBA should revert from sounding more hawkish or upbeat on the recovery of this meeting. It's key to note that the differently uh, from the US and Europe, only 14% of Australians are actually fully vaccinated. So I don't think the RBA uh, will be able to lift the Aussie next week. Uh, from a technical perspective, Aussie traded into the resistance highlighted in the daily market outlooks at the uh, 74 handle and we found fresh sellers coming into the close on Friday. I've been looking for follow through early in the week to get a test down to the pivotal 72.70 if, uh, if we don't find support there, then we can extend lower into the 71.33 zone. And, uh, and that will be a, a pivotal test just below there at 70.92, which is the descending pitchfork target there. Uh, so we'll see if we get the follow through early in the week, and then we'll watch how we trade at 
60s to see if we can uh, try and base there and make another attempt at a correction. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.